Bonsai! Oh, hey everybody. You're probably wondering why I have a sad emoji mask on right now. Well, other than the fact that I only have two possible frames of emotion, being hmm and ah, I'm just not really in a good mood. You see, today we're talking about a FNAF fan game that I was extremely excited for, but ended up getting cancelled. When it comes to free fan-made projects on the internet that people are making in their spare time, there's always a super high chance that they could end up getting scrapped. And there's a ton of reasons for that. The people working on it could just get bored with it. There could be some team infighting. There could be people on the team who end up being terrible human beings, who grab leaked info from other fan projects and share them in a Discord group chat, plotting to take over the entire fan game scene. You know, things like that. Thankfully. Today we are not talking about a situation that ended in a malicious way like the last example, but instead we're going to talk about a FNAF fan game that was extremely promising, but went out with a silent whimper, never to be heard from again. The game in question, Five Nights at Freddy's 6, Freak Show. This project aimed to completely remake Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator from the ground up, while also putting a completely new twist on the tone of the game. From promising gameplay to insanely good visuals, this was, in my eyes, one of the most exciting fan games I had seen in a while at that point. Me and my friend Acid would constantly check back on the game jolt page, just waiting for the day the full game would finally drop. But then one day, there it was. In big bold font at the top of the game jolt page, it read, This game is cancelled. We were genuinely shocked. What the hell happened here? Well, I may not have a super concrete answer on that front, but I still feel like this game is worth talking about, since even if it will probably never be finished now, it is still genuinely one of the coolest FNAF remake projects I have ever played. So strap in, folks. Today we're going to talk about everything FNAF 6 Freak Show has to offer. But first... This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. So, I don't know if you guys know this, but you can actually play video games on your phone. I know, what a concept. One of these video games is a little game you've probably never heard of in your life. It goes by the name Raid Shadow Legends. Every great game needs some kind of serious challenge waiting near the end. Well, in Raid Shadow Legends, that end game is the Doom Tower, and it's one heck of a ride. To climb to the top, you're gonna need an army of champions to help you. The regular floors are pretty manageable, but the boss floors are a beast of a challenge. A couple of bosses even need specific mechanics to beat them, like the Scarab King. I could go on, but a lot of the fun is experiencing the challenge for yourself. I also have some Raid Shadow Legends news to tell you all. This month, Raid has a special event every single day, including an entirely new event for the Summer Solstice, called the Path of Light. On top of that, there's some awesome new champions coming out, and a set of skins for the amazing Turned a Guilt Mallet. Everything here looks awesome. But wait, there's more. Raid's currently running a special Deliana Chase event, where you can get your hands on one of the strongest characters in the entire game, Deliana, a brand new legendary champion from the High Elves faction. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and July 20th, and you'll get Deliana for free. You don't want to miss this. This is the best time to get started with Raid. And if you click on my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen, you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Tayrel, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, and 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard, so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All of this treasure will be waiting for you here. Once you're in game, just enter promo code MYDELIANA to get your hands on everything. Simple. Get 50 XP brews instantly to get your legendary hero Deliana to max level 50, as well as a ton of silver. Thank you Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to business, shall we? Before we dive right into Freak Show, I think I should lay out my stance on Pizza Sim first, since knowing my opinion on that game will probably make it easier for me to explain why I love so many of the changes in Freak Show. For starters, the tone of Pizza Sim is far different compared to any of the other FNAF games that came before it. Besides spin-offs, of course. This was probably done to shake things up a bit, after five other games. But looking at all the games side by side now, Pizza Sim really sticks out compared to the others. Now even though Pizza Sim is different, I don't hate it. Far from, actually. The Tycoon sections, while not being very fnaf -y, are really fun, and the cool minigames you can buy are an awesome bonus. The Salvage sections are still terrifying, even after playing them multiple times. The one-on-one -on -one view mixed with the super creepy lighting is just perfect. 
My main issues with Pizza Sim come from the core office gameplay. The idea and concept is cool, taking the audio lure from FNAF 3 and making that the core aspect of the gameplay with multiple animatronics coming for you. But in practice, it is by far one of the most mind-numbing and boring FNAF gameplay loops in the entire series. One of the biggest issues I have with it is that you never, ever see the animatronics during the night besides the jump scares. Which is just super lame when you have two giant ass vents next to you that could be used for all sorts of cool visuals. This office gameplay really just ends up being a lot of waiting for things to be done and desperately hoping your audio alert placements are sufficient enough to pass the night. Not a super huge fan. Which sucks because I like pretty much everything else about the game. I still think it acts as a perfect ending for the series, I just wish I could go back and replay it more often without feeling super bored or getting fed up with the gameplay loop. FNAF 6 Freak Show aims to fix the core office gameplay from Pizzeria Simulator while also improving the overall vibe of the game to better match the tone of those from the rest of the series. This should be apparent right away from how the title screen is set up. Just as the doco title says, this really is FNAF 6 from an alternate timeline, where it deviated less from the other games. The game starts off in a very similar way to the actual Pizzeria Simulator. It does the same 8-bit pizza-throwing minigame, but instead of just glitching out and crashing like Pizzeria Simulator, once you finish three rounds of pizza throwing, you're able to actually exit the arcade game. Once you exit, a really cool playable cutscene happens where you control Michael Afton as he approaches the FNAF 6 location, with a newly redesigned Scrap Baby sitting outside. This then directly leads to the title screen. All of the Pizzeria Tycoon elements from Pizza Sim have been removed here, which I think fits much better for this project. I didn't really have any issues with how Pizza Sim handled that aspect of the gameplay anyway, so I don't think it needed any kind of remake regardless. Focusing on the core FNAF gameplay experience here is a much more manageable idea for a small team of fan developers for sure, and leads to a much more focused project compared to if the Tycoon sections were included. Hopping into what's included in the demo, we have three different kind of gameplay segments that happen each night. These include the Salvage segment, the Office segment, and finally the Chica segment. Going in order of appearance, up first is the Salvage segment. These are easily the most unchanged from the original game, which I think was a smart idea. The Salvage sections in Pizza Sam are by far the best when it comes to horror in that game. You have to listen to a series of audio tracks and document the results of the tests on your checklist. If the animatronic moves, you can shock them up to three times before it begins to lose value. Pretty simple, but effective as always. One of the coolest changes that this game introduces for the salvage sections are the new way animatronic stages are handled. By stages, I mean each position the animatronic can move to. In the original game, animatronics would only ever move when the paper was on screen, so you would never actually see them move from one position to the other with an animation. It would just be a series of images in the game files that cycle through each other until you got jump scared or won. In this game, however, the animatronics have proper animations that play during salvage sections, that show them moving between stages. These look fantastic, and do a much better job of making the scenario feel a bit more realistic. This does have the downside of making these sections a bit easier in comparison to Pizza Sims, since in that game it was sometimes hard to tell if an animatronic had moved stages or not, but here it's pretty obvious when it happens. You're probably wondering what the point of the salvage sections are in this game, since there's no Tycoon Pizzeria to spend your salvage money on. Well, at least in this demo, that money is spent on little bonuses you can buy on the main menu. Not the most exciting thing in the world, but the shop has three things that were slated to only be in the full version, so I can only assume those things would have been upgrades for the gameplay, similar to the upgrades you can buy during the office sections in Pizza Sim. I have one more thing to mention before we move on to the core office gameplay. The voice acting has been completely redone here, which wouldn't be that noteworthy if the dialogue wasn't pretty much identical to the Pizzeria Simulator dialogue. We are unsure of its origin, and while we are unsure why things appear at the back door, what we do know is that they can be used for parts, which can mean a much needed revenue boost. And while we aren't sure why, what we do know is that they can be used for parts, which can mean a much needed revenue boost before starting your next day. If they change up the script substantially, I would understand the need to get new voice actors, but it is pretty much the exact same. Even the animatronic death lines are identical. Together again. Just replaced with new actors. The new voices aren't very good as well. Not to be mean or anything, I'm sure everyone involved in the process cared a lot, but the performances just leave me wondering why they even bother to re-record these lines when the performances in Pizza Sim still hold up very well to this day. Alright, it's time to talk about my absolute favorite part of this remake, the office sections. This game really streamlines the formula from Pizza Sim in a way that is much easier to understand and also a lot more fun in my opinion. First off, the boring ass tasks you have to wait for in Pizza Sim are gone, along with all traces of the noise system. If you didn't know, in Pizza Sim, you had to be careful of how much noise you were making, 
as it would make the animatronics come to you faster. You could minimize the noise by turning off the computer and the fan, or throwing on the silent ventilation. This gameplay aspect is fine, but I was never really a big fan of it. Clearly, the developers behind Freak Show weren't a big fan of it either, because it is completely gone here. The movement scanner and the audio lure are still present, but replacing the silent ventilation from Pizza Sim is a new tab that lets you shut one of two vent doors, which is a really great addition in my opinion that gives the player more control over protecting themselves. The room temperature mechanic is also here, but unlike Pizza Sim where you had to worry about a fan the whole time, here it is much more simple. When you close one of the vents, the room will begin to heat up, and when you open a vent, the room will begin to cool down. Super simple and flows into the overall gameplay really well, acting as a way to prevent the player from having one of the vents constantly closed. The core gameplay loop from Pizza Sim is still somewhat present. You have to check the motion scanner to see where the animatronics are, and use the audio alert to repel them from your location. You're probably wondering now, since the tasks are gone from Pizza Sim, how do you make progress during the night? Well, the tasks are actually technically still here, but they are completely different. Instead of just waiting around and doing nothing for a task to complete, this time, the tasks are more similar to tasks from Among Us, funnily enough. Which might sound weird at first, but this idea really works well in practice. The three tasks include one where you have to hit a white bar a couple times, with each successful hit making the bar smaller and the cursor faster. One where you have to hold down a button and wait for a bar to grow, and one where you have to correctly input a series of numbers back to back without messing up. All of these are very simple, as you can probably tell, but mixed with the tension of the FNAF gameplay here, it ends up creating a super stressful and fun experience that far surpasses that of Pizzeria Simulator in my opinion. Listen. After playing so many FNAF games at this point, it's hard to get scared or even startled by any of them. But I am not kidding when I say this game gets me almost every time still. You end up getting so focused on the tasks that you don't see the jump scares coming. That mixed with the jump scares themselves being incredibly good leads to easily the best scares in almost any FNAF game I have ever played. You really have to be on your game juggling doing the tasks, checking the animatronics, and also checking the vents. That's right folks, one of my biggest complaints with Pizza Sim has been answered in this game. The vents are actually interesting this time. Besides being able to close them, which is already a fantastic addition on its own, now you have the flashlight that you can shine into the vents. This adds both another layer of protection from the animatronics, but also another layer of strategy. In this demo, both Scrap Trap and Molten Freddy are active, which both showcase the different ways animatronics can react to lights in the vent. If you catch Scrap Trap in the vent and shine a light on him, he'll stutter for a bit before leaving which is such a goddamn cool visual. If Molten Freddy gets in your vent, as far as I can tell, there's nothing you can do. However, if you shine the light on him while he's there, there's a unique vent jump scare for him, which is insanely good and probably my favorite one from the demo. The way he leaps out and grabs you just works so well and uses the idea of being trapped in a small room with vents to the fullest in ways I wish Pizza Sim did. By now, you've probably noticed each character has been fully redesigned, which was a very good call in my opinion since these designs and models are incredibly good. Scrap Trap is an obvious improvement in almost every way. And call me crazy, but I might like this design more than the FNAF 3 one. His render isn't amazing, but seeing him in the vent and the jump scare makes him look phenomenal. Molten Freddy resembles Ennard a lot more now, which I think is a pretty good change. I don't really strongly prefer it over the final design or anything, but I think it works. I especially like the more saturated colors on him. Scrap Baby is an interesting case. I'm very conflicted if I like this design more or less than the final, leaning towards liking the actual Scrap Baby more, but this really isn't a bad take on the character. Maybe seeing her in-game would change my mind more, but sadly she is nowhere in this demo. Finally, we have Lefty. Easily the most drastic design change here. But you know what? I don't hate it. Having the cast be split into two masculine designs and two feminine designs works, and I think Lefty looks pretty cool and has a really nice model. Not a bad change. Don't know if I like them more than the actual Lefty, but them not being a recolor for once is a nice bonus. I guess the last thing to talk about for the office section would just be the look of the office. Is it weird to say that this office looks more Scott Cawthony than the actual Pizza Sim office? Like, I know that sounds insane, but like, really, this screams FNAF to me. Almost looks like something out of the Desolate Hope. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is this office looks fantastic. Once you successfully finish the tasks, you can log off and end the night. Genuinely fantastic gameplay, and it does a stellar job of improving what Pizza Sim did both wrong and right. While I felt night 2 was a little hard for a night that early in the game, it is just a demo, so the final game realistically would have some rebalanced things. Also, I know some people struggled with the first task where you have to stop the white bar, but updates of the demo improved that task to be slightly easier, so I never had any issues with it. I know the final game isn't happening now, so it's kind of pointless to talk about what I want to see from a full version, but I might as well go over it anyway. I love the concept of the tasks here, 
but having the tasks change between nights would be the perfect way to keep the gameplay fresh and keep the player on their toes. Maybe even being able to use that salvage money on different, slightly easier tasks would be a good way to encourage performing well on those salvage sections. Do you see why I'm so upset this remake got canned? This amount of potential is genuinely insane, and it's such a shame that all of this work went to waste in the end. I totally understand that the team just didn't want to work on it anymore, but the amount of lost potential here just beats me up inside every time I think about it. The sad fate of this remake aside, there's still one final gameplay section to talk about, that being the Chica section. Once you finish the office section for the night, you move over to a completely brand new gameplay section featuring Logbook Chica, or Scrap Chica. For those of you who don't know, Logbook Chica is a wither design of Chica that was featured in the end of the FNAF Survival Logbook as a teaser of sorts. Strangely, however, she never actually appeared in anything. Well, Freak Show aims to fix that by including her in a new minigame. Similar to the art, Scrap Chica will be sitting in a chair in the dark, only being lit by a light on the ceiling. You're given a paranormal detector that you must fully calibrate and recompile. This involves moving a dial to find where the music is playing three times, then waiting for the device to recompile. While you're doing all this, Scrap Chica will randomly leave her chair. Once she does this, you have to use your flashlight to look at both sides of the room to find her. Once you spot her, using the flashlight on her for an extended period of time will make her go back to the chair. Rinse, repeat until the device is done recompiling. I like this gameplay, but I feel like that it's too simple and easy. Chica has a pretty obvious tell when she leaves the chair, that you can usually see even when you have the paranormal detector up. And you are free to spam the flashlight in both directions as much as you want until you find her. Getting some Five Nights at Candy's 3 flashbacks here with all this back and forth flashlight action. I feel this gameplay would be greatly improved if it was more sound-based, with limited flashlight. That way, you would have to actively listen to find which side she was on. And if you just spam the flashlight, you would run out of power so fast that you wouldn't be able to complete the night. I think these changes would make the gameplay loop much more engaging. As a fun little extra though, it's kinda hard to complain that much. Maybe the final game would've even expanded on this concept more, but sadly, we'll never know. Well, that pretty much wraps up what's included in the demo for FNAF 6 Freak Show. The game was announced to be cancelled during an interview with creator Marco Antonio, where he kinda just casually mentioned that the project was canned. Shortly after that, the news was put on the Game Jolt page, and that was the end. One of the most promising ideas for a FNAF remake I have ever played, and it will never be finished. So if Freak Show is dead, what's Marco up to now? Well, his other project, Welcome to Freddy's, seems to still be in production. This is a fan remake of FNAF 1, kinda like FNAF Plus, just different developers taking on the same concept. I'm hoping this game is good, because it looks super promising. Sometimes, fan projects you're really excited about don't pan out the way you hoped. And that's okay, as much as it sucks. Am I bummed out that Freak Show will never be fully completed? Of course. But at the very least, I'm happy that I was able to play the demo and find the new fan game creator to follow for future projects. I'll leave the demo linked in the description and on the end card, if you want to give it a try. It's really fun, and you can play through it all in under an hour. Now if you'll excuse me, I gotta go to the Emoji Mask store and buy a new sad face. I think I threw mine out the window earlier and I can't find it anywhere. See ya!